Hey BookTube, um, I wanted to come back and um, go over a little something with you. Um, first off, I got a couple dogs right here. Oh, you can't really see Fred, that's okay. Um, so I'm having kind of a hard time at the moment. I don't know why they're on me and why they suddenly need me. But here they are. Oh my gosh. Look at that little tiny head. She's so little. Okay, but seriously. Fred, deal, okay? Um, so, besides finishing that book today that melted my brain into crap, um, I also um, read a Robert E. Howard spicy story. Um, <clears throat> now, basically, what... Of course, they're going to wrestle right now. Um, what the spicy stories were... Hey. Knock it off, guys. Hey, what did I just say to you? Yeah. Um, what the spicy stories were, were like... Um, kind of as close as you could possibly get to mainstream pornography, if that makes sense at all. Um, in the 20s and early 30s, um, there wasn't really a rule on what you could and couldn't show in a magazine, or on the cover, or whatever. And there probably isn't... Hey, there probably isn't anything, like, set in stone now. But I would assume there is some sort of code of something. I don't know what it is, or what it would be, or whatever. But anyway, so they basically started off as like stories that were a little lurid, let's say, and then um, publishers were putting art photos in with them or um, French photos in, um, and that just meant naked chicks. Um, or topless chicks, or, uh, yeah, you get the idea. So that was kind of how they skirted around that issue. And I'm not talking about, like, drawings. I'm talking about, like, photographs, okay? So, um, it's kind of like how when, um, in Breakfast of Champions by Kurt Vonnegut, like, um, Kilgore Trout, sold a bunch of his stories to these adult magazines that basically just needed his stories in there to fill up pages so they could have, like, as it says in the book, um, wide open beavers inside. Um, so that's pretty much what a lot of these stories were at first. Um, when the genre became a genre, there were definitely, like, rules and guidelines and stuff like that. Um, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that, too. But, um, for me, the only exposure to spicy stories were like spicy detective and spicy mystery, um, which were pulps and, um, they're like other words they use. Spicy became the norm word used. You had like spicy Western, spicy detective, spicy mystery, um, spicy adventure, um, and all this other stuff. But there were other things like snappy. That was um, a word used um, in the early days of it. Whatever. So, okay, we have a kind of idea here. Um, so with 
the spicy detective stories, like, they followed, like, the exact same format as any other detective story. But um, at one point or another, like, um, the bad guy would, like, grab the girl, and when he yanks on her arm or something her dress rips off and she's in her underwear where she's like in like a torn nightgown or something like that and then the hero comes and saves the day and all this other fucking shit so um it was really and well sometimes there sometimes there would be like some sort of like peeping tom kind of scene where like um like a dude would like watch a girl change or something like that and the funny thing is is that it wasn't always the bad guy like the good guy would do that sometimes which is weird <sighs> but anyway um so Come on, guys. Don't do this. You haven't done this all day. Okay? Hey, Minnie, stop it. She's backing up on him. Knock it off. Um, so I read She-Devil, which I honestly have no idea why it's called that. Um, the whole time I'm sitting here going, and this is Robert E. Howard, okay? But the whole time I'm reading it going, okay, at any time she's going to, like, turn and go, ha, 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 this whole thing was my doing. Blah, 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 blah. Never happens. Um, so, spoiler there for you. But this is probably, this would probably fall under Spicy Adventure. It would have to. Like, I don't, I don't know what else it would fall under. Um, and I don't know if it's that I'm reading stuff through the lenses of current year kind of stuff, you know, but, um, uh, me and Zoe were just talking about this and, um, like we should never try to like change history okay like all of this happened like all of these things were written the racism was there the sexism was there all of these things were there and there's absolutely nothing we can do about it um and we shouldn't try to do anything about it um the only thing we can do about it if you are not wanting to read it is not read it. So <clears throat> basically the the gist of this video is just read if, if we're going to read Robert E Howard, you know, to be on the safe side, just read Conan and Cole. Um Solomon Kane has his moments that's iffy, but again, that was hundreds of years ago. Technically. So it doesn't feel as it does when it's like 80 years ago. So, um, yeah, I would just say stick with those. And, but again, like with the repetitive nature aside, because even the Conan stories have repetitive moments and the Cole stories have repetitive moments. Um, but like the, this, uh, Steve Costigan stories, they're really good, but they're very formulaic and it's very, gung-ho America, USA, sailor, post-World War One attitudes. And it's, um, it might be hard for somebody to read that stuff. Um, and I'm, I don't mean hard to read it, just like you might think it's just awful because of how it is. And that's 
fine. Um, but the story I read, She Devil, like, was all over the place. Like, this captain's fighting with his girlfriend who's on his ship, which I don't know why she's there in the first place. It seems completely out of place for her to even be here. Um, and she has this map and she's going to throw it out the window cause she's mad at him or the porthole or whatever. Um, he pisses her off. She slips, the map flies out and apparently the map was, um, it had like the location of basically a barrel full of $8 million. Okay. And, um, so he's going to kill her. But then there's a commotion on the deck and there's some soaking wet dude and he's like in a boxing match. Like they're fighting some other dude on the boat and um, so they're going to tie him up or whatever. So they tie him up to the mast or whatnot. That's going on. The girl's like all into him. She, she notices his muscles and she's like, ooh la la. You know, he's hot. So she goes and rubs up on him while he's all tied up and whatever. And, um, he's like, go steal me some whiskey so I could like get in the mood here. So he, she goes and does that and he drinks a bunch of whiskey and throws the bottles over the edge and whatever. Um, the captain catches them together. He's going to kill them both. And then he tells them that he knows where they were heading and he knows where the, um, the treasure is. So of course they're not going to kill him. And he's like, don't kill the girl either. Don't hurt her. Or else I'm not going to tell you nothing. You need me. I could take you there. So they're going. And then, um, like, I think it's the middle of the night. Um, he's kind of steering the boat, I guess. And tells the girl he actually has no idea what they're talking about and where he's going. But then he crashes um, into land. And everyone's pissed off. And um, him and the girl jump overboard. And they start shooting at him. And they run into the jungle. Okay, so let's go out on a limb here. It's the 1930s. They crashed on a island that... They don't know about, and they just ran into the jungle. What are they going to find? Okay, so while she's naked sunbathing, a but not naked, she still has some stuff on, um, uh, a savage grabs her, and um, there's all sorts of descriptions of um, how creamy her skin looks against his skin and just like all of this stuff. And I'm just like, for fuck's sake, people. Um, but then like the hero, like drop kicks the guy and takes the girl. And as they're running back towards the boat, there's all of the captain and all his dudes coming and they're like, shit, what are we going to do? So he, he's like, okay, fine. I'll tell you where the treasure is. If you go 300 yards this way and then make a left, um, you're going to come across this small, um, like pool of water. Um, it's at the bottom of that pool. That's where it is. Blah, blah, blah. So they go down there like the bad guys go and him and her start running um, back towards the boat. And as soon as he gets close enough, he starts yelling at the guys in the ship who've gotten the boat off the sandbar and like on the water. He's like, Hey, the captain is fighting um, a tribe of people in there. You, we got to help him. Come on, let's go. Whatever. So no one believes him, but then they start hearing all these gunshots because he led them right into the tribe's camp or whatever. So like 400 dudes jump overboard and um, run out into the jungle to help save the captain. And then there's like 400 tribesmen who come out and there's like just bloodshed everywhere. 
him and the girl get back on the boat and he's like, Hey, I'm the captain of the boat. Now I'm the only one who knows how to um, sail this thing. And your captain is dead in the jungle. So you could either stay here, you could either go help him, or you could help me get this boat out of here. And then he tells the girl, and you need to go get in my cabin because I ain't done with you, kind of whatever. So <clears throat> it's just ridiculous. And I don't know if it's just this Robert E. Howard story, which it probably isn't. This is probably like par for the course. But, like, in reading, like, Spicy Detective, like, nothing came across this ridiculous. And it might be because I read and have read a lot of hard-boiled detective stuff. So, the hard-boiled detective stuff pretty much had all of this stuff in it anyway. But what I wanted to share with you is... um uh, Frank Armors, who was um, an editor for uh, Spicy Detective, his um, Sex and, De and Detective Fiction Do's and Don'ts, 1935 Editorial Guideline. So, this is what he says. Number one, in describing breasts of a female character, avoid anatomical descriptions. So, I think this is where... Um, things look like grapefruits and stuff like that. Um, number two, if it is necessary for the story to have a girl give herself to a man, do not go too carefully into details. You can lead up to the actual consummation, but leave the rest up to the reader's imagination. This subject should be handled delicately and... Um, a great deal can be done by implication and suggestion. Wink, wink. Um, number three, whenever possible, avoid complete nudity of female characters. You can have a girl stripped to her underwear or transparent negligee or nightgown or thin torn shred of her garments. But while the girl is alive and in contact with a man... We do not want complete nudity. A nude female corpse is allowable, of course. You know, that's a no-brainer. So, uh, number five. Also, a girl undressing in the privacy of her own room. But, when men are in the action, try to keep at least a shred of something on the girls. That is such a poorly written sentence by an editor. Number six, do not have men in underwear in scenes with women and no nude men at all. Because this is 1935, and it's obvious that women don't read, and this ain't a gay magazine. So no naked men, okay? Okay. So, um, that is 1935. Um, so I, uh, I think I'm going to just go back and read some Conan because that's good. Super good. Um, and I'm going to kind of stay away from Robert E. Howard stuff that, um, it's funny because the stuff that actually made Robert E. Howard money is probably the stuff we should never read. Um, so, I guess, like, the, the, the rule of thumb is, if it could have been in Weird Tales, then we should probably read it. If it could not have been in Weird Tales, it's probably pretty sketchy. Um, that's my opinion as of right now. I haven't read all of Robert E. Howard's stuff, but... Um, as I go on through the millennia, I will let you know. So, um, read some Conan, BookTube. So, see you later.